Super Sim? Are, are you okay? What are you doing? Hi, Instructor Pete. I'm okay, thank you. We were given an assignment for homework to practice flying to the moon, and I just can't seem to make it. Oh, wow, that is always a tough part of training. But you can do it. You need courage. Let's play a quick game to distract you. Boys and girls, welcome back to our Superhero Academy, where we train people of all ages to face their fears, live lives of courage, and make a difference in this world, remembering what true courage is. Courage is being brave enough to do what is right, even when you're afraid. Yes, that's exactly what courage is. So let's do a quick quiz on some courageous people in the Bible. Let's see if you can remember. This man was courageous because he led God's people through the Red Sea. Ooh. Moses. Yes. Yes. This man and his wife were very courageous because they believed God could answer their prayer to have a baby even in their very old age of a hundred years. Wow. Um, Adam and Eve? <laughs> no. Um, Abraham and Sarah? Yes! Oh. Right. Now these were two courageous spies who stood up for what was right, even when others were afraid. Um, Caleb and Joshua? Yes, you got it! Yes. This man courageously stood up to Pharaoh with Moses and helped Moses speak to Pharaoh. Um, Moses' brother Aaron. You got it! Yes. yes! Wow, there are so many courageous people in the Bible. Yes, there are. Now, are you ready to learn about another courageous person from the Bible? Yes, I am. Today, we're picking up God's story after God's people, the Israelites, had entered the Promised Land. If you're just joining us, or if you missed a week or two, don't worry, we'll catch you up. Let's look at where we've been so far. God made an amazing promise to a man called Abraham. God promised to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites. I remember, the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt. But God heard their cries for help and saved them. He led them out of Egypt through the desert to a new land, the land of Canaan. Yes, unfortunately, after the Israelites entered Canaan, they kept turning away from God. Oh no! They did their own thing instead of listening to God. And this happened over and over again. They wanted to be like the nations around them. Oh, hectic. But before I get carried away, let me introduce you to our cast. First, we have the prophet Samuel. Samuel was a priest over God's people, and God spoke through Samuel by giving him important words to share with others. Next, we have a man named Jesse. Jesse was a dad. He had lots of sons. One of the sons was called David. David was a shepherd who would fight off wild animals to protect his father's sheep. So, we pick up our story with the prophet Samuel. In the middle of the chaos of God's people turning away from him, God had a plan to choose a leader. A leader who would listen to God and lead the people back to God. God spoke to Samuel and Samuel listened carefully. God said to Samuel, Fill your animal horn with olive oil and go on your way. I am sending you to Jesse in Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to become king. Did you hear that? God wanted Samuel to choose one of Jesse's sons to be the new king of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Samuel traveled to Bethlehem where Jesse and his family lived. Blessings, Jesse. 
Welcome, Prophet Samuel. God has sent me to anoint the next leader from one of your sons. Bring all your sons to me. This is my firstborn. No, not him. How about him? No, not him. This is the most handsome of my sons. No, not him either. Whoa! Jesse brought seven of his sons before Samuel, one by one. Samuel tried to decide if any of these sons was the one that God had chosen. Some of them certainly looked like a king, but Samuel listened to God and God gave him the answer. Listen to what God told Samuel about one of Jesse's sons, Elia. Do not consider how handsome or tall he is. I have not chosen him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outside of a person, but the Lord looks at what is in the heart. God doesn't pick people for what they look like. God looks at the heart, of course. Samuel asked Jesse if he had any other sons. And Jesse said, well, there's my youngest son, David, but he's out taking care of the sheep. Jesse sent for David and David stood before Samuel. Samuel looked at David and knew that he was the one God had chosen. God said to Samuel, Get up and anoint him. This is the one. Samuel poured oil on David's head, which was a special sign that God had chosen David to be the next king of Israel. But that wasn't going to happen for a long time. David would need to wait. In the meantime, King Saul was leading the nation and he was in a battle against some mean people called the Philistines. And they had a big problem because the Philistines had a secret weapon, a warrior nearly three meters tall. His name was Goliath. Whoa, now that's tall. It sure is. Goliath pointed down at the Israelite warriors and shouted at them. Choose one of you men. Have him come down and face me. Yeah. Yikes, that's scary. The Israelite warriors were terrified by this fearsome warrior who repeated the same challenge 40 days in a row. Here's where things got really interesting. Remember how David had all those brothers? Yes. Well, they were part of the Israelite army, but David and his dad, Jesse, were at home while his brothers were at the battle. Jesse was worried about his sons he wanted to make sure they were okay. So he told David to leave the sheep behind and take some food to his brothers. When David arrived at the battlefield, he heard Goliath challenging the armies of Israel. He thought, this man can't disrespect the armies of God. Somebody has got to do something. Well, King Saul heard that there was a young man, David, asking about Goliath. Saul sent for David, and David told him, Don't let anyone lose hope because of that Philistine. I will go out and fight him. Saul tried to convince David that he was too young to take on a mighty warrior like Goliath. But David told Saul that he could handle it. After all, as a shepherd, he had fought off wild animals to protect his sheep. Saul told David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. King Saul tried to get David to wear his armor, but David said, no, thank you. The armor was too heavy for him and David wasn't used to wearing it. So David took off the armor. I can't wear this, it doesn't fit me. David picked up his shepherd's staff and his sling and he went down to the stream to find five smooth stones. David then went to face Goliath on the battlefield. You are coming to fight against me with a sword, a spear and a javelin, but I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord who rules over all. He is the God of the armies of Israel. He's the one you've dared to fight against. This day the Lord will give me the victory over you. 
Talk about courage. David reached into his bag, found a stone and put it in his sling. He slung the stone at Goliath and the stone hit Goliath on the forehead and ah. Goliath fell to the ground. David had won the battle for the Israelites. Wow, that's amazing. So what happened after David defeated Goliath? Well, the Philistines ran away. The Israelites chased them until their whole army scattered. Oh, and King Saul was so impressed with David that he invited him to come live at the palace. David still wasn't king at this point, but eventually he would go on to become the king of the Israelites, just as God has said. Wow, David really did have true courage. He did. All of the other warriors were too afraid to go up against Goliath. It seemed impossible that anyone could defeat him. But David didn't let that stop him. David knew that God had been with him in the past and would be with him in that seemingly impossible situation too. Even when other people said he was too small or too young or didn't believe he could do it, David knew God was with him and that was all that mattered. When you and I have to face something that seems impossible, we can ask God for the strength and courage we need. You can do what is right, even when things seem impossible. Let's pray and talk to God about that now. Father God, we know that you're always with us too, and we are so thankful. Each of us in this room has faced things in life that seem impossible. Maybe we're facing one of those things right now. Please give us the strength and courage we need to do what we should do, even when it's hard. We love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Instructor Pete. I'm so encouraged. Boys and girls, isn't it amazing how much courage David had? No one had believed in him. Not his brothers, not King Saul, not even his own dad. But God knew David was special. God had chosen David. God was with David. David had so much courage to face Goliath. Not because he believed he was strong, but because he knew that God was with him. That gave him the courage to stand up and do what was right even when the whole army of Israel was afraid. True courage comes from God. True courage to do what's right, even when it feels impossible, comes from knowing that God is with you. That's what our memory verse is about this month. Let's say it together, boys and girls. Be, be strong, strong and brave. brave. Do, do not, not be afraid. afraid. Do not, not lose hope. hope. I, I am the Lord your God. God. I will be with you everywhere you go. Joshua 1 verse 9. And that's true for us too. God is with us wherever we go. That should give you the courage to do what is right. You can do what is right even when things seem impossible. Now it's time to praise and worship God. Salani Gasle Bangani. Bye. I'm too afraid to lose I feel I'm qualified for what you're calling me to But Lord, with your strength I've got no excuse Cause broken people are exactly who you use So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness Give me a heart like David, Lord be my defense, so I can face my giants with confidence. You took a shepherd boy and made him a king, so I'm gonna trust you and give you everything. I'll be 
you fight for me I'll be a champion claiming your victory So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness Give me a heart like David, Lord be my defense So I can face my giants with confidence I'm gonna sing and shout and shake the walls Won't stop until I see them fall Gonna stand up, step up when you call Jesus, Jesus I'm gonna sing and shout and shake the walls Won't stop until I see them fall Gonna stand up, step up when you call Jesus So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness Give me a heart like David Lord be my defense So I can face my giants with confidence So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness Give me a heart like David Lord be my defense So I can face my giants With confidence I'll face my giants With confidence